Now, if you're wondering how to use Streamlabs OBS to stream your PS4 and even your PS5 games, this step-by-step -step video will be perfect for you. Basically, the method that I'm about to show you will be 100% free. You can use it on YouTube, Facebook or Twitch. You don't need to spend any money to buy any expensive capture card. The quality of your stream will be really good so your viewers will love it. It is extremely easy to set up. And of course, because you are using Streamlabs OBS, you can actually customize your stream to your personal liking like the layouts, the design of your streams, and everything in between. Basically, by the end of the video, you will discover the best way to stream your PS4 with Streamlabs OBS. What are the best settings for Streamlabs OBS to make your stream perform smoothly and how to make your stream look really outstanding, unique, and special than anyone else. Now, I've actually done a similar video before, which is one of the most popular in terms of Streamlabs OBS with the PS4. But this video is the new and updated one, as some things have already changed, so do pay close attention to what I'm about to show you. So before we begin, you need to make sure you have the following first. Firstly, you obviously need Streamlabs OBS installed on your PC. Link will be in the description down below. Secondly, you need to download Remote Play. Link will also be in the description down below. And finally, you need to have at least one extra PSN account. Don't worry if you don't have any extras, you can register one for free at the PlayStation website, which means in the end, you will have two accounts in total. One which is your main account with all your save files, and one more which is the extra account. Now I know what you may be thinking, why do we need two accounts? Isn't the one that I actually have more than enough? Don't worry, I'll explain it as the video actually goes on, and you will understand why it's important in the end. And don't worry, you will still be using your main account, which includes all your save files and everything else. So to start off, make sure that you do the following first. Firstly, make sure Remote Play is active on your PS4. You can do this by entering into the settings, Remote Play Connection Settings, and then enable Remote Play. This is important, so make sure to do this. Secondly, make sure that your PS4 is set to primary PS4. This is important as well to allow remote play to happen without any issue. You can do this by entering into settings, account management, and activate as primary PS4. Last and finally, on your PS4, do create a new user and log in with your extra PSN account. As you can see here on my side, I named it as remote play, so it is actually easier for me to know what it is. Now that you're done, let's move on to remote play on your PC for the next step. Make sure that you have Remote Play downloaded and installed. After that, simply log in into Remote Play with your extra PSN account. Now proceed till you see this screen here and you might want to click this setting button first on the bottom left side. And under video quality for Remote Play, this is where you can change the quality of your Remote Play. 720p and standard frame rate is good enough for me. But if you have a stronger internet connection or a PS4 Pro, then feel free to put it higher to 1080p. After that, click OK. Now before you actually click onto the PS4 button here, double check that you are already logged in into your extra PSN account on your PS4 to prepare for the remote play connection. Once ready, simply click on the PS4 button here on your remote play app. The app will automatically detect your PS4, so make sure that both of your PC and your PS4 is connected to the same internet connection. It will take some time, but eventually it will connect successfully, and you can see that your PS4 gameplay is finally on your PC. But wait, this is the final crucial step. Follow closely. You will notice that your controller is automatically disconnected from your PS4, after the remote play connection is successful. All you need to do now is to simply press the power button to turn it back on. But this time, select your main account with your save file and everything else. After selecting your main account, your controller will disconnect for the second time. Simply press the power button again once more and voila! You will notice that remote play on your PC is mirroring everything on your PS4 and you are now ready to bring it over to Streamlabs to finalize everything. Now a quick explanation on why do you need the two accounts because I have many people asking me this. Well to put it simply, it is to eliminate all input lag. As an illustration, if you only use your one main account for remote play, you need to eventually connect your controller via USB wiring to your PC for it to actually work. 
and because your controller isn't connecting directly to your PS4, you will face input lag because the controller signal will basically need to pass through the PC first and then only to your PS4, which actually will create input lag. However, using the two accounts basically eliminate this lag because in the end, if you follow this method correctly, your controller will be connected directly to the PS4, which reduces all input lag to basically zero. Now, I hope that actually explains why you need two accounts, but do comment down below if you have more questions. But for now, let's finally move on to Streamlabs OBS, and I'm gonna be showing you how to set everything up in Streamlabs, and also how to make your stream look really good and unique on your own. Obviously, if you know how to use Streamlabs already like a pro, you already know what to do. But I highly recommend to watch the video anyway as there are some details that you've easily missed and could be of use to you. And also, while yes, this free version of Streamlabs is definitely enough for your stream to work, I would highly, highly recommend to upgrade your account to Streamlabs Prime to get the best experience possible for your stream. Trust me, your viewers are going to be blown away by the quality of your stream after this upgrade. It is really cheap and the best part is you get to save $10 more by using the link I have in the description or the pinned comment section down below. So if you want to bring your stream to a whole nother level, just click on the link and you are good to go. Alright, now we'll add Streamlabs OBS and the next step is to basically bring remote play onto Streamlabs OBS. That way, your audience is able to see whatever your PS4 is actually playing. Start off at the bottom here at the scene selection. Make sure that your scene has been selected. If you do not see this here, you can simply click on a plus sign to create one. Next is to head to sources and then click on a plus sign once more. And then select Windows Capture and then press Add Source. I'm just gonna name this as Remote Play so it's easier for me to remember in the future. Once you're done, click on Add Source once more. Over on the Windows side, click on the drop down menu and then select the Remote Play program and then finally press Done. Adjust the size to fit the screen and you are basically done. Now if you just so happen to not see the remote play here, there are two ways to actually fix this. The first one is the easiest one which is to simply right click on the source and then remove it. After that, simply add it in back again following the same steps and it should work after that. And if it does not appear still, the second fix is to simply restart remote play first and then once it is connected again, simply head back into Streamlabs and then re-add the same source and it should be working fine after that. Now I'm gonna be showing you the best settings to set up in Streamlabs so don't go live yet and also show you how to make your stream look really really good and unique on your own. Start off by clicking on the settings button on the bottom left here and you basically want to disable this setting for more fluidity. Head over to the stream and then log in to your YouTube or Twitch or Facebook account. The cool thing about Streamlabs is that if you have an account on YouTube or Facebook or Twitch, you can actually stream onto them at the same time. But the catch is you need Streamlabs Prime for that and if you are serious about your streaming career, I highly recommend to upgrade to Streamlabs Prime so you can stream on multiple platforms and while at the same time, earn three sort of income on the three different platforms. It is a great way to multiply your income by live streaming. Anyway, I'm streaming on YouTube so I am logged onto my YouTube account from here or you can click on stream to custom ingest and set things up from here as well, that works fine too. Now the stream key section is the crucial point as you must never share this out. Basically this is where you tell Streamlabs to stream to and you can find your stream key by basically heading onto your YouTube or Twitch or Facebook account and that is where you can get the stream key. Simply copy and paste it here and you are good to go. Usually you don't have to do this extra step if you've logged in through Streamlabs already as the stream key will automatically be filled up. But if you are facing issues, you know where to get the stream key. Now move over to the output option and just simply follow these settings that I've put up. These are the ones that I use and it works great in general no matter what stream quality you choose. If you have an NVIDIA card, this is definitely the best setting for your encoder. But if you have an AMD card, there should be an AMD option here. If not, simply choose software to use your CPU power. As for the bitrate, 
I would like the range of 3500 to around 6000 depending on whether you are streaming on 720p or 1080p. Make sure to not set it too high or your viewer will experience a lot of buffering and that could be an issue for viewer experience. As a general rule of thumb, a bitrate of 3500 to 6000 is usually more than enough. For the rest of the setting, you can pause the video and follow exactly what I put on right here. For the audio, this is personally preference so I'll leave it at that. And then video, this is personal preference as well. What I do is to set the base canvas to 1080p and the output to 720p. What this does is stream at 720p and therefore it doesn't use as much power and it doesn't use as much internet bandwidth. Therefore, the experience will be extremely smooth for my viewers and for myself. But if you are feeling confident, feel free to crank it up if you want to. Make sure that this is set to Langsos and common FPS value to whatever you want it to. I set it to 60 FPS because why not? Then again, set it to 30 if your internet isn't strong enough. The rest on the left here is basically not that important for me to go through, so make sure you go through them yourself and set them up as you please. After that, everything is now set up perfect and technically, you can now start streaming by clicking on the go live button on your Streamlabs. Fill in the settings of your stream such as the title, description and whatnot, and then click on the live button once you are ready. Alright, now that you know how to stream on Streamlabs OBS already with your PS4, I'll now show you how to make your stream look really special compared to everyone else. Head over to the top left here in Streamlabs and you will see the theme button, which is where you can fully customize the design and the layouts of your stream. These are really really cool designs to look around, so feel free to browse through here. Now why I recommend upgrading to Streamlabs Prime so much is that you will have access to themes that are actually animated. You can take this theme for example, it is a cyberpunk theme. When I clicked into it, there is a preview of how it actually looks like and that looks extremely cool. I'm personally a big fan of animated themes as it makes your stream looks way more professional so I recommend upgrading to Streamlabs Prime if you're serious about streaming with the link that I've provided down below again to get $10 discount on your Streamlabs upgrade. All in all, browse around the theme area and pick the one that suits you the most. Of course, there are many other customization options. Feel free to check around as it will take too long for me to go through all of them. And speaking of customizations, if you want to add checkboxes, donation messages, customize sounds for your alerts, click on the video on the left here or you can click on the video on the right to find out how you can add an AI voice for your chat box. It is really really fun. This is the Viperian signing off. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in that next video.